Good morning. morning. For our lovely flower display, that's fabulous. So as we begin, we would like to acknowledge that this service is being held by a community that gathers on the stolen traditional lands of Massachusetts, Nipak, Patakat, and Wampanoag people. We pay respect to those indigenous peoples who lost their lives in the colonization of this land and recognize that these indigenous tribes are still today facing violations of sovereignty, territory, and water. We also give thanks for the earth we walk upon, the waters, the life-giving plants, and all the earth's creatures, as well as the wind, sun, moon, and stars. We recognize this is a first step in moving toward right relationship with native peoples and healing of the earth. A little chilly this morning, what can I say? But good morning and welcome to the First Parish Church of Stowe in Acton, a welcoming and spiritual commu communication community. My name is Sharon Brownfield and I serve as your president until the end of this month. <laughs> if this is your first time with us, we welcome you. Please let us know you were here by filling out one of our visitors' information cards in the pews and hand it to an usher, drop it in the plate, or hand it to Meg, who's in the back waving, um, our welcoming staff member. Our minister and staff are listed on the front of the, the order of service. Please feel free to ask me or any of these people uh, for more information about the church and its programs after the service or by email or through chat if you're online this morning. Please refer to the order of service for the masking policy or ask an usher and check with your people you're talking to about their comfort levels. If you would like a large print order of service or hymnal or an assisted listening device, please ask our ushers. Our assisting listening devices work throughout the building if you'd like to listen to the service from another room for any reason. After the service, please join us for coffee and conversation and a reception for we want to welcome Song He as she came back to us today. Um, or in a breakout room if you're joining us online. I'd like to really draw your attention to the announcements in our order of service and also invite you to check our web page for more information. You can also sign up for our newsletter and email alerts. Um, if you brought a flower, please bring them up here um, because that'll be part of our service as usual. And on the table here to my, right there, <laughs> with the flowers on it, are cards to uh, express some gratitude and appreciation for the work that Song He has done for the last 10 years. With that being said, let's join a time of community singing and worship by first greeting your neighbor. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So wonderful to see you all here today as we celebrate this 100th anniversary this month of the flower communion ceremony. 
Our opening words are from my colleague, the Reverend Allie K.C. Bell. This beautiful flower on this beautiful tree has been given many names. Nothing that we call it can take away from what it is. Beautiful, natural, blooming. And so are you, beloved sibling. They may call us many names, but nothing can change who we are. Naturally occurring, beautiful, blooming. I am because you are. You are because I am. I love you. I need you to survive. Our chalice is lit this morning in recognition of this 100th anniversary of our celebration of the Flower Communion, which stands for the diversity and love for all of humanity. And our opening hymn is by Norbert Chopek, creator of the Flower Communion. You're going to hear his name a lot today. This is Color and Fragrance. It has six verses. We're only going to sing the first four verses, the ones that are in the stanza. Please rise in body or in spirit. join in our covenant and affirmation printed in your orders of service. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Now I'm inviting forward Marissa and Meg to tell a little bit about the history of Norbert Chopek this morning.
This is an introduction by Suzelle Lynch, a bridge. Imagine the courageous people of a war-weary nation, finally free to reclaim and renew their spirituality and culture after the war to end all wars. Imagine their hunger for a message of unity that reaches across all lines of difference. Over 100 years ago, the Congregation of Liberal Religious Fellowship in Prague, Czechoslovakia, was the community of their dreams. The Prague Congregation of Liberal Religious Fellowship was founded by the Rev. Dr. Norbert Chapek and his wife, Maya. Dr. Chapek, a brilliant writer and preacher, avid singer and eager student, was born into his mother's Catholic faith in Bohemia and grew up in a home flavored by his father's history with the Moravian Brethren. Norbert Chapek grew up thirsting for a faith free from hypocrisy, a faith that would respect his mind and help him give voice to his convictions. As an adult, Chapek served Moravian and Baptist religious organizations, growing more religiously liberal with each passing year. He left Bohemia under a government threat and accepted a call to serve the Baptist Church in New York City until one day in 1919. That day, he wrote in his diary, I cannot be a Baptist anymore. Even in compromise, the fire of new desires, new worlds is burning inside me. Is this on? I can't wait to hear what happens next. In 1921, inspired and empowered by connections he made with the American Unitarians, Dr. Chapek and Maya returned with their children to their native land to build the new religious movement they dreamed of. That religious movement caught fire in a nation alive with freedom and longing for change. The Prague congregation's liberating message and vibrant music drew thousands to worship. Yet something was missing. A new ritual was needed to unite the diverse and eager crowds. Chapek created a ceremony he described as, quote, a new experiment in symbolizing our liberty and brotherhood. He asked each congregation member to bring a flower to church from their garden, field, or roadside. Gathered in one vase, their combined beauty was dazzling, yet each blossom retained its uniqueness. And then, as Chapek wrote, when they go home, each person is to take one flower, just as it comes, without making any distinction where it came from and whom it represents, to confess that we accept each other without regard to class, race, or other distinction, acknowledging everybody as our friend. This compelling ritual of individual free will, the beauty of diversity, and the power of unity was held for the first time on the anniversary of the Prague Fellowship's founding, June 24th, 1923. It became known as the Flower Ceremony, or Flower Communion, and the Prague Fellowship celebrated it annually as they continued to grow and thrive. But all was not peaceful in Czechoslovakia. World War II brought great troubles, and in 1939, Maya Chapek came to the United States to fundraise to help war refugees. She brought the Flower Communion with her to the Unitarian Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and soon the tradition spread to congregations across the country. Norbert Chapek stayed behind in Czechoslovakia to help his people. He nurtured their spirits with his message of their inherent worth. But the Nazis found his message dangerous and arrested him for treason in 1949. He was sent to Dresden prison and then to the concentration camp at Dachau. Chapek kept his spirit strong by sharing his poetry, music, and flower ceremony with other inmates, but the Nazis put him to death a year later. Our church has a special and direct relationship to the Flower Communion in that our former minister, Don Kafka, grew up in the Prague congregation with Norbert Chapek as his minister. He too was put into forced labor by the Nazis, but survived it and came here to study theology. When the Iron Curtain fell, he and his brother who were here to study theology together had to make decisions. Don stayed here, his brother Dushan went back 
and went and served the church in Prague. And they were separated there for pretty much the rest of their lives. Don brought the flower communion to this church for the first time, and we've celebrated it ever since. And while he was here as minister, he wrote this play, imagining Norbert Chapek as holding a flower communion in a labor camp. And in preparing for that, he is confronted by a Nazi guard. And I'm gonna invite forward um, Kendra Jablonowski, who is one of our actors, along with Marissa this morning. Don begins with these words. The conversation you are about to hear is an imaginary one, which might have occurred between my minister, Dr. Norbert Fabian Chapek of Prague, Czechoslovakia, and a German guard, Sergeant Willy Schacht, in a con concentration camp at Dachau on Saturday, June 17, 1943. What are you doing here? Oh, good afternoon, Sergeant. As you can see, I'm only gathering flowers. Flowers? Why those look like weeds to me? Sergeant, don't you know that weeds are only flowers growing where we don't expect them? Besides, in camp, we prisoners are grateful for any sign of life that we can find. So, they may be weeds to you, but they are flowers to us. But what do you want with flowers? You have more important things to worry about. We plan to use them in our church service tomorrow morning. A church service? How can you have a church service? You don't even have a tent to hold services in. We believe that going to church is most of all a frame of mind, Sergeant. If even a few people gather together to focus their minds and hearts on the very highest wishes they can possibly conceive, and as children of the evolutionary thrust of life, celebrate the gift of life it doesn't matter that they don't have a building they must respect each other seek the way of truth invoke a peaceful world and work for the common good that is what is most important well you know i have to watch you anyway the commandant is afraid you might be hiding weapons out here in the weeds or flowers or whatever they are i was just wondering if flowers can't be weapons themselves you know, if men could only use them correctly, perhaps flowers could be the only weapons that they would need. Bah, you've been out here in the sun too long. What kind of weapon is a flower? Answer me that. A gun is a weapon. A tank is a weapon. But what good is a flower as a weapon? No, Sergeant, you misunderstand. Flowers cannot be used as a weapon against a soldier. But I believe that they can be used against the things that make soldiers against hatred and prejudice and greed. Nonsense. This is more of your queer Unitarian mutterings. Men have known flowers for centuries, but they've been soldiers even longer. Yes, that is true, Sergeant. But maybe men haven't yet learned to love flowers enough. Maybe if they spent more time with flowers, they wouldn't feel such an urge to be soldiers. All right, I'll go along with your game. What if men learned to love flowers? They would just fight over whom they belong to. That is the trouble. And that is why man, men make trouble for other men, because they want to keep things for their own, flowers included. What would you do with flowers then? Sell them? Oh no, Sergeant, these flowers are not to be sold. It is because flowers are free and meant to be given away that they are beautiful. Only when they are given freely do they have the proper meaning. They can be used for weapons of good. What are you going to do with those flowers, doctor? Who will you give them to? There are only soldiers and prisoners in this camp, and you've admitted that, sol that flowers aren't any good against soldiers. Well, these flowers are for the people who come to church to give to each other. They are very little things, but they can mean a great deal if you want them to. They can represent the value that we have for one another, the beauty we see in a friend's face, the hope, whatever our lot, for the future. They also represent the many different gifts which we have received from life, our various talents and skills and abilities, which we share with each other all the time and which we are all blessed by. We don't usually realize that our happiness is the result of many people's contributions, 
But the sharing of flowers with those that we love can help us see that this is so. It can make us more deeply grateful for all that we have. I don't understand how you and your tiny group of friends can feel gratitude, what with being in this place and knowing what fate awaits you. Dear Sergeant, it is exactly because we are a small band who exist in peril that our gratitude is so strong. Our very existence is a priceless gift, and no matter what should befall us, it is imperative that we should remember the precious values of our heritage, fellowship, and hope. What if I should attend your church service? Would I be accepted, and would you share a flower with me? If you come in sincerity and brotherly love, Sergeant, no one will turn you away. We will turn away no one who comes in peace. As for a flower, here, you may have one of mine. Here ends the imaginary conversation between Dr. Chopik and Sergeant Schaff in the concentration camp in Dachau, Germany in, 1940, in June 1943, which is five months before he was finally executed. Thank you for that portrayal. We know that while he was first in, imprisoned in Dresden and then in Dachau, Norbert Chapek continued to write and write hymns among the, his writings. As a member in the clergy, uh, clergy building within Dachau, he was permitted to send out regular letters about twice a month that were heavily censored by the Nazis. But um, one of the hymns from his time of imprisonment, which was retrieved by his daughter Zora, said this. My life is made worthwhile by bravely fighting on for those ideals I hold most great and holy. Though evil winds may blow, they will not rock the calm in my soul, which may, remains both quiet and lowly. I might be disappointed, I might fall in the fight, but I'm sure that my life was worth living. The life which is to come has been my holy shrine. I trust that I have lived a life worth giving. Music was a joy and a lifeline for Norbert Chopik. The texts of seven hymns he wrote while incarcerated in Dresden prison are preserved in the book Norbert Fabian Chopik, A Spiritual Journey, written by Richard Henry. Henry notes that in Chopik's hymns, was sense, uh, we sense his premonition of his fate, yet they are full of hope and beauty. In the depths of my soul, the next song sung by Dave Kay adapts one of Chopik's hymns and sets it to a meditative chant-like melody. The words remind us that in difficult times, Solace is waiting deep within us. In the depths of my soul, there lies the strength of Of your own 
Thank you, Dave. That's beautiful. The flower communion represents the diversity of all of humanity and our care for one another. Each flower is different, precious, special, and represents the person who brought it. But you won't necessarily know who that is when you take one. So when you pick a flower, you represent your care for all of humanity in all of its glorious diversity, the wide range of humanity. We're going to begin our flower communion with the blessing of the flowers by Norbert Chapek, done by the Reverend Peter Samajski, um, when the current minister of the Prague congregation, while he was here in Stowe this fall. So the video shows him standing right up here and wearing my rainbow stole, which I'll be wearing this afternoon at Pride. And we're going to um, hear his words, and then we're going to start with our flower communion. I'm going to invite people to come down this aisle and come this way. Then as you come over this way, if you haven't signed this car these cards over here for Sanghi and you want to do so, you can do that, or you can do that at the end of the service too, and then go back down the aisle. Um, what I'm gonna say uh, is that, oh, first, if anyone also would like a flower brought to them, please raise your hand, and one of our ushers or staff members will bring you a flower. And I'm gonna ask too that you take two flowers today because we have so many, I'm sure we will not run out if you all take two. And so you can take one representing your love for this community and all of the human beings in it, and one as a representative of the wide world of humanity of which we are a part and our love for all of humanity. And then after we do the flower communion in here in the sanctuary, I and the staff are gonna come forward and pick flowers out of the vase and present them to the people online. And as we do that, we're gonna have our Zoom host, Kim Kinnear, has said she can spotlight each person on the, in the, on the screen, and we will present to them with a flower. If you do not wish to be spotlighted and receive a flower, just simply turn your video off and we'll know not to spotlight you. So let us begin now with a meditation read by, in Czech and in English, by Reverend Dr. Peter Smuchsky. These are the words I offered as a meditation over the flowers before their distribution. Ve jménu toho, co je svaté. Ve jménu toho, co je dobré. Ve jménu toho, co dává život. Sešli jsme se tady dnes, v tomto místě. Byl nám dán život, abychom žili v povědomí věčnosti. Neboť to je zdroj štěstí. Abychom pracovali na sobě a vnášeli do svého života štěstí. Abychom byli co platní druhým, se kterými jsme provázáni neviditelnými vztahy. Vy květiny připomínáte nám tu úžasnou jednoduchost přírodního řádu a to, že i my jsme jeho součástí. Připomínáte nám krásu a harmonii rozmanitosti. Připomínáte nám, že lze cítit a vnímat a žít jednotu v různosti a různost v jednotě. Nech jeden duch tvůrčího života nás spojí, tak, jako mezi námi vládne. In the name of what is holy, in the name of what is good, in the name of that which gives life, we have gathered here in this place today. We have been given life to live under the aspect of eternity, for that is the source of happiness to work on ourselves and bring happiness into our lives, 
to be as valid as possible to others with whom we are connected by invisible relationships. You, the flowers, remind us of the wonderful simplicity of the natural order and that we too are a part of it. You remind us of the beauty and harmony of diversity. You remind us that one can feel and perceive and live unity in diversity and diversity in unity. Let the spirit of creative life unite us as it reigns among us. And now let us begin our flower communion.
Now we'd like to spotlight our off-site participants in today's service and give you flowers. 
Ellen, I choose this flower in honor of you. Uh, Wanda, this flower is for you. Joe, this flower is for you. <laughs> and this flower is for you. This flower is for you. This flower is for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Karen, we choose this flower in honor of you. And Kim, this flower is for you. And for all the many people off-site who did not choose to unmute their videos, like if my parents are there, they never do. Um, these flowers are for you, this beautiful diversity of hum humanity represented here at FPC. Um, and if anyone would like to take a bouquet of flowers over to the Pride booth, feel free to this afternoon. And now we'll hear the prayer of the flowers with the Reverend Peter Samochski again. Let me share with you the meditation which Norbert Fabian Čapek offered for Flower Communion. Ve jménu prozřetelnosti, která do jádra ukládá budoucnost mohutného stromu a do srdcí vkládá budoucnost zbratřeného lidstva, ve jménu toho nejvyššího, co námi hýbe, co činí matku matkou, bratra bratrem a sestru sestrou, ve jménu mistrů a vůdců božských, kteří vlastních životů nasazovali, jen aby uspíšili příchod říše lidskosti, pro dobro vlastní a prospěch svého národa obnovme své předsevzetí, že si chceme být upřímnými bratry a sestrami bez ohledu na jakékoliv přehrady, které odcizují člověka člověku. V tomto svatém předsevzetí Síliš nás vědomí, že jsme jedna boží rodina, že jeden duch, duch lásky nás spojuje a jedna snaha po dokonalejším a radostnějším životě nás vede. In the name of providence, which implants in the seed the future of the flower, and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony, in the name of the highest in whom we move and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, lover and loner for what they are. In the name of sages and great religious leaders who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect. Let us renew our resolution sincerely to be real brothers and sisters regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from each other. In this holy resolve may we be strengthened knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love unites us and endeavor for more a perfect and more joyful life. life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Peter. And um, our plate is shared this month, but with, between the work of this church and the work of the Organization for the Assabet River, um, an organization doing good work for our beloved Earth right here in this area. So if you um, would please give generously as you are able, it is gratefully appreciated. And Brad's going to introduce our anthem.
the words and melody of hymn number eight in um, our, your gray hymnal there were written by Norbert Chopek and translated into English and adapted into the familiar song with its questions and images of Earth's beauty. Chopek's hymns tell us that he felt the spirit of life and love with him always. And in this new song, a voice of the spirit answers each question, journeying with Tropic and with all of us. Because the spirit of life and love is expansive, not limited by gender, the language has been updated, and we invite you to listen for the diverse divine voice that sings, you are my beloved. Thank you. 
So today is a bittersweet day for us here at FPC because we are bidding farewell to a beloved member of our team for many years, Sanghee Kim. Sanghee, I'd like to call you forward, as well as Ruth Lull representing the choir and Brad Dumont, our music director, and Sharon Brownfield from our board of trustees. And Sanghee, I'd like to say to you that it is it's been a pleasure to work with you these last five years since I got here. You've brought wonderful gifts of music to our community over and over again. And just as a personal note, one of my favorite moments um, and one of the blessings of my job is that I get to be there in my office quietly typing away alone in the building and all of a sudden the lovely strains of your music come wafting into my office and I know that you're here with me. And then we have these moments when I can come out, we have a little moment of connection, but it's just that I get to listen and waft in your music and rest, and it fills my soul and my spirit. So thank you so much for the gifts that you've brought this community. And I'm going to ask, ask Brad to talk next. It was such a joy to walk in and see you this morning. I didn't expect to see you at 9 a.m., and I was so glad to see you so early. Um, I've only been here for two years, so I haven't seen the full, oh, I should say, over here. Um, I don't have COVID, I'm, I'm recovered, but um, uh, I am, after two years, um, already knowing that I'm going to have a colleague that I'm going to try and stay in touch with, and a friend, um, Coming in two years ago, you were the support for all of the music. You were the person who cared for us all. You made sure that we knew what was happening and you were the kind of lifeline for everything as we came out of COVID. You were the person I knew knew was gonna keep us moving forward, keep us really secure. And I appreciate that security. Um, I know if Mike Fitzer was around, he would be able to speak to all the incredible time that you spent together. And that's why I'm going to hand it over to Ruth, actually, so that Ruth can speak a little bit about um, the incredible 10, 12 years that you all have had together um, on behalf of the choir. Sang Hee, the words that I'm speaking are coming from me, but from all of us, from the choir. Um, you sang he with your mu beautiful spirit and musical heart. You and your music have given us so much beauty over the last many, many years that you have been here. Thank you so very, very much. You have been such a gift to us. Sanghi, um, it's a tradition at FPC to acknowledge staff as they move on their, in their journey or go their own way for the contributions they make to our community. And we want to recognize you and thank you for coming back and letting us do that. Um, people have said a lot. It's through your music that you have touched our soul and brought us to really appreciate the gifts that you have and the talents you share. You've shared them in so many ways, not only in service, but in special concerts where you bring your friends. We've really loved them. So for the congregation, I'd like to thank you. There's a little card. And we have a little bag, <laughs> which is my tradition. But let me, uh, so, that you, so that you remember FPC and Unitarian Church, a little mug.
สองอีนั่นเลยขอบคุณเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่าเราคิดว่า First Christmas, first concert with all of you. Sorry, I'm still broken. <laughs> Trying to not to cry, but it was really a hard decision to leave FPC. But I bet at this place I knew. And your love will be huge chapter in my life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to invite Sanghee back whenever we need guest pianist because she's available. She's going to be, it won't be for a while because she's going to go to Korea this fall to visit family for several months. Um, and so that's one of the beauties of, of not having the regular work is that you get to take the whole fall to go home. Um, but we're going to bring her back whenever we can. <laughs> Thank you. And I think we have, we want to invite you down to the social hall after the service for a while if you'll come. Thank you. We are over the hour. You heard the bell ring, but we do want to have some time to acknowledge those important joys and sorrows that you're carrying into this beloved community today. So, if you have something that you need to share that's really heavy on your heart, I invite you to do so. Um, please remember to keep it brief and to share your name as well as your joy or sorrow. For all of these and everything that we hold as well in our hearts, may they be lifted up into the care and embrace of loving community. Let us take a moment for prayer and meditation in silence. Blessed be and amen. We have one last hymn that is um, from this special flower communion cantata, and it is your insert in your orders of service. Brad's going to give us a little introduction. To be one is to be in covenant with one another, supporting each other. 
in our free and ever-changing community of faith and action. This new hymn, We Are One, references our history, affirms our present, and invites us all, siblings and strangers, cousins and neighbors, into a bold future that centers love. We invite you to rise in body or spirit and join us in singing this hymn. Closing words are by the Reverend Suzelle Lynch. We are one, we are free, we are here. Much has changed since the year, in the year since the first flower communion, but our commitment to the values it embodies grows ever stronger as we continue to shape a faith that fiercely and gently calls forth beauty and kinship in easy times and times of heart-rending challenge. As we Unitarian Universalists work to dismantle our culture of oppression and exclusion, learn to truly embrace a multiplicity of cultural worldviews and shift our historical center to follow peaceful new leadership by those whose voices have been suppressed for too long, we make real the bold vision of Norbert and Maya Chapek and the Flower Communion. Their spirit, courage, and commitment live on in us 
May we ever remember our community with those who have remember our continuity with those who have struggled generation after generation for peace and justice and liberty. As we share our flowers, may we always remember the abiding beauty that calls us together and calls us to ever greater justice and ever greater love. Amen. Please join in our closing song. Thank you. 